So I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I just watched some videos of myself rolling in jujitsu. Wow. Oh man. Okay, okay, let's end the torture. There's a certain bite to learning that you suck. It's an especially bitter flavor when you felt pretty good about your performance in the moment. Then you see a video or hear a recording and... Torture. But I think you know where I'm going with this. About 10 years ago, the same thing happened to me with the drums. I'd been playing gigs. I'd already graduated from music school. I'd even made a record. So I'd been playing gigs, but for some reason I got frustrated and decided to make a drum cover. Because it hadn't really been happening for me with the gig scene, and I was a little frustrated I was gonna show the world how good I was. So I make this drum cover, and I'm listening back, and it was bad. The same feeling in my gut that I have now reviewing that jujitsu video. In fact, I remember exactly what I did. I ran myself a bath. I'm not kidding. I took a bath, like an hour long bath, in the middle of the day. A perfectly nice, beautiful day, and I just laid in the bathtub feeling sorry for myself for a whole hour. Point being, learning the true extent of your deficiencies feels horrible. But in this video, I'm gonna give it a little reframe. And I'm gonna tell you why learning you suck at the drums may be the best thing that ever happened to you. Literally, a gift. And I'm gonna talk about the primary things you're likely to learn when you invert a honey bear, dump it down your gullet, and wash down that big, jagged, bitter pill of suck. Awareness. And I'm gonna give you some ways to hasten the suck revelation. Some ways to go digging for the suck, even if you feel like you're a pretty good player. And finally, I'm gonna show you how to use the suck to forge yourself into an unstoppable machine. Just like Andrew Neiman. Actually, nothing like Andrew Neiman. It's gonna be way easier and you won't have to practice until your hands Anyway, embracing the suck. I literally wanna cry. Here today, stay tuned. Let's start with why learning that you suck can be a gift. So you want to be good at the drums, right? You don't just want to think you're good at the drums and have everybody else know the truth. At least that's who I hope I'm talking to. So here's the reframe. And I'm going to ask you to put a minute on the clock of the bear with me meter. I promise we'll get back to drums. Imagine you had an undiagnosed illness. You generally felt mediocre and clammy and shivery all the time, but you'd never really felt anything different. So maybe you didn't know that you could feel any better. Then imagine you went to a doctor about some other random thing, but he ran some tests and found out that you had a rare brain parasite that was gradually digesting your brain and lowering your IQ by at least 50 points. Hey, stay with me. Now imagine a simple brain surgery would rid you of the pesky parasite forever. You'd be back at full mental capacity too. A simple, extremely painful, experimental brain surgery with a 50% risk of death. Now, imagine you sought out a second opinion, and it turned out you didn't have to do the extremely painful and risky brain surgery after all. All you had to do was read bedtime stories every night in Russian. It would take a few years, but eventually you'd bore the parasite to death. And in the process, you'd be learning Anyway, once that brain tumor was healed, you'd realize your happiness was 10 times what it was before. Looking back, you wouldn't believe what mediocrity you'd settled for. I think you get the point. Learning about a deficiency on the drums isn't a painful surgery. It's learning that there's a way to feel better. You don't even have to undergo expensive, painful, risky, experimental <laughs> brain surgery. All you have to do is practice the drums for a few years. But that's not the whole story. Because you also get to stop wasting your time in the practice room. You get to stop spending day after day practicing the same tired stuff. Assuming this is as good as you're going to get. Learning you suck is also learning the specific ways in which you suck. Which means you know what to work on to fix it. Let's talk specifically about the three ways I learned I sucked. The first is time.
it's almost a cliche now that you have to have a good time, you have to have a good timing. But what if your time wasn't as good as you thought it was? It's exactly what I discovered when listening to a recording of myself playing some kind of complex jazz thing. I realized I was rushing and dragging in spots I wasn't aware of before I listened to the recording. Now I get way more into the way your times can rush and drag in other lessons like this one, but let me just tell you about the two types of time. The first is what I call micro time, and that's literally just is the distance between your subdivisions consistent. When you play 16th, is that the same space every time. Because when I listened back to that recording all those years ago, it wasn't. It was rushing and dragging. The second category is what I call macro time, which is even if your minute subdivisions are cool, over the course of a whole tune or a whole four or eight bars, are you speeding up or slowing down? And what I found is in some cases, at some tempos, I would drag like crazy over the course of a tune, and in other cases, I would rush. It was really inconsistent. Let's talk about the second weakness I discovered. It's about what I call playing clean, which just means when you hit the drum, you get a clean sound. When you're trying to get a rim shot, you get a rim shot. When you're tending to play two limbs together, for instance, kick drum and hi-hat, you're really playing them together instead of flamming. When you go down the toms, you're playing in the center instead of hitting rims. And when you're playing ghost notes, you're playing in the center of the drum, unless you're not trying to play in the center of the drum. When a drummer's not playing clean, a lot of times they'll be flamming. They won't be playing in the same spot of the drum always, and the rim shots will be inconsistent. And I definitely heard a lot of that on my playing when I first discovered that I sucked. The third is what's sometimes called flow, which is just being able to play my ideas stream of consciousness without either having buffering errors when my ideas ran out and I didn't have anything else to play, or repeating myself, or just playing the same tired old licks. When I'd listen back to myself, I'd hear a lot of repeated licks, a lot of instances where I just ran out of vocabulary, and a lot of it rushing and dragging. So those are the three ways I found out that I sucked. So you could wait around to learn at random you suck like I did, but you know it's a lot faster going looking for the suck. Here are a few ways to do that. So the first is pretty obvious. Just play something without a metronome and record yourself. If that's too easy, make it harder. Add a coordination element. Here's one I've been working on a lot. Keep the hat on constant eights and put down the stick in your lead hand. If you want to make it really hard, do what I described a couple weeks ago in this lesson and add the lead hand back in on 16th note offbeats. So you have something like this. Three, four. Another way to make it harder, play with a lot of offbeats. Three, four. Another way to make it harder, play really slow. Another way to make it harder, play a solo. Now, here's the most important part. You have to listen to it, even if it's painful. And that's how you bring the suck out of hiding. Finally, let's talk about how to use that painful, soul-destroying moment of learning you suck to get better at the drums. And here's how you use the suck in the practice room. When you're listening to that recording, write down everything you hear that's painful. And remember the emotion. 
because you're going to use that intensity to funnel that back into your practice and make you passionate because you never want to feel that feeling again. Now, a few strategic ways to practice stuff. There's much greater detail about this in my course called The Practice Course. More information about which at the end of the lesson. Number one, make it your primary goal. Start with the most sucky thing that makes you cringe the most. Make that your top goal. Number two, don't work on anything else. That's going to be your entire focus for a little while. Number three, if it's too big, make it smaller. So say there's a lick you heard that you duffed, you rushed or dragged, it wasn't clean, it's really painful. If it's too hard to practice the entire thing, choose a smaller chunk. When that chunk's better, go on to the next chunk. This is all sort of accelerated learning stuff. Number four, and this is redundant, just like the rules of Fight Club, do it the first thing you do every day and don't work on anything else until you've done it for like 35 or 40 minutes. And finally, number five, when you're ready, record yourself. If it's gotten better enough that you're satisfied that you no longer burn viscerally with hatred for your own playing, then move on to the next thing. This happened in a very real way recently to me with the thing I was playing about the constant hi-hat stuff. And to see an entire lesson about that, just click here. Anyway, that's fully and legitimately how you get the gig. Finally guys, a little postscript, because when I watched that jujitsu footage back, one of the most painful things was wondering if everybody else was onto some kind of secret that I wasn't, and I just didn't have the ability to learn like other people. And what I want to tell you is that's not the case. And by doing this kind of tape study where you look at your weaknesses and pinpoint them, not only are you not going to have a weakness, you're actually going to leapfrog in front of everybody else who's just doing it more or less at random. Just wanted to leave you with that little tip. Look, at least that's what happened to me on the drums. I don't know about jujitsu yet. We'll see. Fingers crossed. All right, guys. See you. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that one. Cuts a little close to the bone for me, but I had to get it out there. And dudes, if you've been following the channel for a minute and this lesson resonated with you particularly, you may be interested in something called the practice course, which is a complete 180 from the way most people practice. And guess what? When most people practice, they're stuck in a rut half the time. The other half of the time, they're chasing shiny objects around. They don't focus on anything long enough to get better at it. And they never feel like what they're practicing is coming through in their playing. If any of that sounds familiar, I recommend checking out the practice course. And as a gateway drug to that, I'm going to give you something completely free. If you click the link below the player, you'll get three free videos I'll send you within three weeks that'll make you playing better in the next three weeks than it's gotten in the previous six months. Dudes, it's been real. Hope you dug this one. See you again soon in another lesson of the week. Inhale it. Feels good.